Gordon, PhD psychologist. Dr. Gordon, whose private practice here in the Lehigh Valley includes psychotherapy and forensic psychology, often testifies in both civil and criminal cases as an expert witness on psychodiagnosis. Dr. Gordon is also past president of the Pennsylvania Psychological Association. But if I have a whole list of hospitalizations and treatments, where he's hospitalized for hearing delusions, uh, you must kill this person, this is God, or they're the devil, or something like that, that really helps my case that this person is insane. So in that case, the history is very important. Talking about was that like, is, how that could is. somebody do something so terrible mm -hmm. and then go into a hospital for a couple of days and then whoop that scares us? Well, one, we have to realize that's very rare. The other thing we have to realize is that what's the basis of insanity? It goes back for thousands of years, our sense of justice, that if we want justice in a sense to protect the public and to have some sense of retribution, the person has to have a sense that it was wrong and that they could control themselves. No one would want to put a two-year-old in jail. As we all agree that a two-year-old doesn't have a sense that this is a loaded gun and it kills somebody and that's forever. Now, if we have a 30-year-old man with the IQ of a two-year-old, we would all agree that this person should not be tried like somebody who understood the wrongness of it. So to get rid of the insanity defense, as it's originally formulated, is saying that the person have, should have that basic sense of knowing that it was wrong and that they could form their behavior to that knowledge. But Bob, what anything to do with it? Well, right, let, me ask the, let me ask Dr. Robert Gordon. He says that... Ben Birdwell, you evidently did some tests on this client? Yes, I did. Tell us about Ben Birdwell's psychological profile. Well, he shows a psychopathic tendencies, and that could be because of environmental factors. Uh, a lot of psychologists look at that in terms of genetic factors. I think as human beings, we all know hate, but there's something that stops us, something that's part of our temperament. And the thing about somebody who has psychopathic tendencies, when they start to hate themselves, they need to scapegoat somebody sure. else. Sure, I agree. Now, who are they going to scapegoat? You look at violence. They're black guy. Well, it also like a guy, the Jewish lady. It also be people who are very dogmatic, who help you to feel very alienated, who have been frustrating you, or you believe been frustrating you since a child. Often, family members are the ones that are scapegoated. Why do they kill them so bad? Why kill them so ugly? Why do it and do it and chop and chop and beat and bats and why? See, it didn't have a goal to get some kind of money or anything like that. It was primitive in its rage. It was an explosion. It's like Lizzie Borden giving her parents 40 wax. It was so intimate. That's what made it so violent. The time to help the Israelis deal with the terror of Scud missile attacks. He says that the anxiety rather runs deep. We'll present a three-part series on what Dr. Borden observed in terror-stricken Israel. The series starts tomorrow night on Channel 69 News at 7. <laughs> are on the way. Why is that loud? As part of Gordon's mission was to document the people's reaction to the terror, he brought a camcorder and taped these pictures, and the Israeli government equipped him with this. A Muslim had hit the Tel Aviv area, or at least fragments of the missiles did. Actually, Gordon had been in the neighborhood the Scud seemed to be fond of in the Tel Aviv area, but this resident who befriended him sent Gordon back to Jerusalem so he wouldn't be in the target area. Don't ever think psychologists... You are waiting for the bomb if it will fall near me, on me. Okay, put your hands on. I feel so angry cursing Saddam Hussein. What the Israelis themselves have been going through. Dr. Gordon is on a list of Jewish professionals who were asked by the Zion Organization of America to volunteer their expertise in Israel. It's hard to imagine taking your kids through this. Okay, put your hands on. You have to listen to the radio for instructions. Dr. Robert Gordon's video recorder captured the terrifying reality of life in Saddam Hussein's target zone. They were in a car and they drove around. Bump. In the Tel Aviv area, Gordon met this man whose neighborhood had been blasted. You can see uh, the, the, all the houses was uh, there also destroyed. He showed me his sealed rooms. The Israelis are very proud of sealed rooms and how they do it. The children will come out and I'll show you how they put on their gas masks. Now he heard the scud. Yes, the whole hospital is in declared contaminated. Gordon saw Israel's preparedness for treating those who are victims of poison gas from what they call Saddam's doomsday rocket. Yeah, you, know, you know what it will really look like. It's going to look like something out of, out of a science fiction movie. TV sex therapist Dr. Ruth accompanied Gordon's group. She can relate to the horror of the gas masks. Uh, it's upsetting to me because I know that gas was used in Auschwitz when my parents were killed. And then we had booms, and uh, 
to the Rangers Field when they put the dog right out of the kneecaps. They were shaking, you know, and I thought, oh my God, this is happening. And I couldn't breathe with this terrible mask on. And I was alone and I didn't have the phone. Gordon says the mother suffered the most from war. And of course, there is a sense of what kind of a world I bring.